What happened to the stream? Oh, you. All right, everyone. Welcome back to this hotly contested game number three. I'm going to cut short because Ooh. Going Ghost has done a bit of an invade here. Looks like it's not going to catch anyone, but they're looking for kills. They're on the hunt here, Cracodonius. They're going to get warded out. Ooh, Ooh. well, there right, goes plus, that plan. Hey, plus 15 gold, though. Hey, that's a gold advantage. That's what I like to see. Should have gave it to the mid laner. Always give. <laughs> the mid laner because uh, that exp is you get level two off wave one that is oh, so big that's pretty nice yeah um i actually did not know that but giving it to the jungler here basically doesn't really mean too much yeah it does absolutely nothing it's <laughs> terrible <laughs> so maybe the worst person to give it to because he's uh you know he's still gonna hit the same levels at the same time uh same amount of camps and everything like that so um won't really affect that too much maybe he'll get six a little bit quicker uh who knows but um yeah, going to be a really interesting early game here. I think both of these junglers are probably going to be looking to impact the early game uh, pretty significantly. A lot of uh, that CC is going to be coming out um, specifically in that bot lane as well. So I would like to look towards that as a uh, big point of contention, especially with that Amumu. He wants to make stuff happen early, probably level two or level three. I assume we're going to look for an all in from them. So I'm um, going to see if that ends up happening. Maybe even potentially could see a bot side clear into a bot gank as I, well. But I you think they know. should go in level one. I think they're so much stronger level one. They definitely but, are. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull that off. Both these junglers, though, they don't like pathing with each other. They're always, <laughs> it looks like they're always pathing opposite sides. So that is interesting that they've managed to do that all three games here. They're getting pushed yeah. in. Interesting, though, because Ezreal is seen as someone very weak push, and Jinx should be able to get the wave out a lot faster here. But they're playing it safe. They don't want to get ganked by Worm Jones, so they're going to pull that wave in. Meanwhile, top side, Boreal, you know what the plan is. He's trying oh to smash gosh. that top lane. Yeah, Lucas is going to be taking a beating. He's going to be drinking a lot of OC, OJ, in uh, <laughs> coming coming minutes here man loves his vitamin c what can we say yeah he doesn't want to get that scurvy there in the mid lane it makes a lot of sense i mean that's a typical thing for a pirate to do um you know that you know drinking oj um you know having his favorite letter be the the r you know what i mean and so um there's definitely a lot of uh, opportunity uh for him to try to stay in it but it's gonna be a pretty hard in the early game and zach coming in early in the Oh, doesn't get the knockup, but will get the stretching strikes one. And now Zircon, no HP, no mana, is going to be the first enemy to fall here. And a Boreal off to a good start again. Zircon, though, has gone down first many times in the top matchup to strike back again. So I don't think the story is done up there. I definitely agree with you there. However, already being ahead 10 CS for this uh, Mordekaiser oh, it's not is going to be very bad. Um, and then also Zircon using the flash there um, means he's going to be in a pretty bad position, I think. Um, you know, if if that Mordekaiser is able to hit a uh, pullback onto him, you know, we could even look for a regank from the Zac as well um, because there's a lot of potential, I think, for another kill here as this wave is going to bounce back here shortly. Yeah, the bounce back's going to be deadly. Arboreal's trying to get it in. It's not It's not easy. It's He's trying to force it, but it's fighting back a little bit. Zircon trying to push this wave back. Eventually, Ooh. looks like he's going to get it. 
Oh, he's trying to find that knockup, but there's nothing anywhere near Worm Jones. They're trying to get down Zach, but they don't have enough damage. I mean, it's Gangplank early level plus Aramis. They just don't have that damage potential. Yeah, you have to wait pretty late for that Gangplank to start popping off. Probably like, you know, that level 11 range is going to be your goal. But Lucas Oh, they go trouble. for it again. Now there's minions around. Lucas, they do make Zach go into his passive worm. Jones is just tanking up Kilgar. They're waiting for the the, the clones to get very close. Wait! Oh. Lucas well, had no mana. He didn't have the ability to finish it off. Worm Jones just trying to do his best to smack the goo minions. I wish... Is there actually an official term for them? Because I don't think there is. <laughs> oh, the, the goos? I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what they would be called. Um, I just call them clones. It's kind of like I mean, little clones. It, it does say like on his uh on his ultimate ability that they're called goo chunks when they're off off like when he gets the extra health or whatever from picking those up um so i guess potentially they they could just be called goo as well so um, okay i i you know that hey official it's official guys so um we're gonna have to see you know what ends up happening here um a good early start here for ggis obviously that top lane is looking very nice up about two waves already um, as well as the mid lane up about a wave as well for the Varus. I mean, so both pretty solid uh, solo lanes here. The biggest thing that we need to continue to focus on, though, is this bot lane. If Adishon and CHJ are able to, you know, stay alive for, you know, a good amount of time during this laning phase, it's going to look really nice for them here. However, Zach has been putting a lot of his attention towards the top side here. So if they want to make something happen, they're going to need his help eventually here so i'd like to see him path towards the bot side yeah boost this so far is down in cs should not be in this scenario here mm. ash on low in mana but is just chilling the wave is pushing and they're just knocking down those minions one by one here worm jones lucas level six does get knocked up stretching strikes right into the Vars ultimate lucas goes down kilgar has his namesake proven here picks up a kill worm jones i uh, wouldn't recommend this but he's just trying to harass away this zach just ends up wasting everyone's time though yeah kilgar goes fishing with the ultimate there uh able to pick up lucas um a really nice play from this zach so far um i think which i mean he's been doing all that he needs to do finding those ganks around the map putting a lot of pressure out for his team and while ramus might be up in farm which definitely has the overall uh, map presence on his side. And that's going to be Dragon number one going over to the side of GGIS as well. The TP coming out from Zircon, but doesn't really mean too much here. You're not going to be killing a Boreal anytime soon, in my opinion. As long as he has that ultimate up, it's going to be pretty hard for him to do much of anything. So, um, you know, just basically trying to get that a little bit of farm back, but a Boreal's in a pretty good position here at the top side. Yeah, Boreal facing down Malphite here, getting ever closer to that Rylize, and that's when Mordekaiser really takes off because you can't get away from him once he gets in on you. CHJ roaming up here, doing a little bit of a warding mission. Adishan was able to push in the wave, and now is free to affect the map here. Ooh. This CS difference on Lucas, though, yeah, I think that is a good. big deal. I mean, GP does have the money printer passive, but you can't actually fall too far behind it is a good safety net though yeah it definitely will help a little bit here but yeah if he's it kind of depends on how he's getting that farm as well like if he's not actually getting it with his q his you know if he's not getting it with his parlay it's gonna be hard for him to keep up in that gold because he doesn't get those extra stat boosts he, if he's just taking them as he gets them it's gonna be pretty hard for him here now the ultimate coming out for Mar oh Mar the commitment now. wow well, they All right, everything. Looks like, yeah, everything going wide on the bot side here. Oh, Zerk on that was a bit mm -hmm. risky, and, well, it, it kind of paid off. Lucas, though, runs right in his Mordekaiser, no ultimate. Worm Jones trying to sneak away this rift. Oh! Doesn't get it. He smited way too early, and it looks like Kilgar is going to pick up the rift as well, and now Worm Jones falls. What an absolute oh! disaster right into Witch at Black Mass, getting that kill onto Adishan. Oh no, it's, it was looking all good right up until this moment. CHJ survives a rocket here.
but uh, time will tell. Boost is able to get that kill and boost right out of there. And, well, Krakadonius out of nowhere, 5 and 0 and a Rift Herald take. Uh, that is just an explosion of a win for the side oh, of Going gosh. Ghost. And that was, that potentially could have been the worst that it could have gone for GGIS, in my opinion. They were missing everything there in the bot side of the map. They missed the Zack jump. They missed the the hooks from, uh, you know, the bandage tosses coming out from Amumu. They, they were just, they played that about as bad as they could have, and it still came out all their side. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, continuing to see them get these fights, and if they're able to make that stuff happen consistently, man, they are going to be in a world of hurt here for the side of TD Lunar because they are looking so, so strong here for GGIS so far in this game. Yeah, that's a huge gold lead at 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's looking like Ghost is in a pretty spot right now. Um, Zach, I mean, look, Witch at Black Mass, he's just engaging over and over and over again nonstop, and somehow it's working out. Yeah, I mean, it is working at the end of the day. Um, you know, even if he's missing his abilities, somehow it ends up making some sort of sense and, you know, making stuff happen. Now, two and a half minutes until this next dragon. Gonna be an important pickup here. Uh, Cloud Soul for dragon number, sorry, Cloud Drake for dragon number two. We'll have to see what the soul ends up being here um, in just a few minutes. But uh, it's going to be, I think, it's pretty important for both of these sides to try to contest that if they are able to. But I think GGIS is going to have the priority on it. Lucas still really far behind for this farm. Almost 30 CS back now, as well as in the top lane, uh, another 30 CS for them. It's not looking good for these solo lanes to be able to stay in this game. And it's something that is going to be extremely important come mid game that this gangplank is able to put out that consistent damage for him to have that farm. Yeah, that is something that they're all looking for on the side of TDL. Ooh. Oh, Samus gets the root and now the curse of the sad mummy right into the elastic slingshot. There is just no saving grace here. The bouncing right on Adishon, he does go into goo form. And look at oh. that support, Samus sacrificing his life for an 80 carry. That is the type of support and trust that I want to see here. But they do get a win here. TD Lunar, they are looking like they are actually the ones who are going to pick up this dragon, despite all the setup. Wow, a significant misplay from the side of GGIS here. Not able to find the mark on to Adishaw and uh the rest of the team here they did pick up chj but it was just a little bit too little too late the you know with worm jones able to follow up there and able to tank a little bit now that's going to be dragon going over the side of this tdl squad and they're looking to come back oh, into this game Gilgar. oh nice wait there was no ultimate on the ramus RCHJ gets oh, bandage toss no. and the last next slingshot. I've seen that before and we'll probably see it again. This Soraka is having a terrible time surviving. Pretty much needs to be the farthest away from yeah. Zack and Amumu to live in these in these exchanges. And like we love to see a Soraka being able to get that vision priority. However, in this matchup, it's going to be very hard and you have to be extremely strategic about being able to get that stuff off because as you can see, there is so many opportunities to be able to engage on on you from so far away to where, and, and Samus even, you know, if, if they are anywhere nearby, they can basically just 1v1 this Soraka as well. So, you know, you're gonna have to play this one way safer if you're the side of CHJ and, uh, you know, TD Lunar here, if they wanna be able to get this vision priority and being able to keep this Soraka alive is going to be number one. And that already three deaths, just 13 minutes into the game. And they are not looking at too solid here. Going to have to play a lot safer if they want to be able to come back in this one. Yeah. Let's talk about Adishon here because it's looking like all of the hopes and dreams of TD Lunar rest upon this AD oh, carry no. right now. As it looks like Witch at Black Mass is trying to get another engage. The gank machine that he is... And it looks like CHJ might be in trouble. Bandage toss, though, was not landed. The Soraka, Silence, and Root 
is going to ward that off. But only for now. They are going to hit it again. Samus is... Oh, he does bait it in. The curse is going to lock them together. But there's not enough damage to follow up. And Worm Jones is just striking to the heart of their team. Boostus has to get out of there. Arboreal in the thick of it. Does pick up the kill on Adishon. That is so huge for their team. Oh. And now the meatballs are colliding here. And it looks like for GGIS, they win that meatball fight. The front line on this Mordekaiser is just huge. All that percent health shred is doing work. Man, and I didn't know we were going into an Ikea here. So many meatballs everywhere. The double TP coming down towards the bot lane, and it seemed like it was just enough for the side of GGIS to come away with a small victory there. But, I mean, it's not something that you are proud about um, if you're on the side of GGIS. Not a big enough victory for you, and it gives more gold over to the side of TD Lunar that you just can't give to uh to those targets as well you know getting a little bit more gold on the malphite getting him maybe back into this game a little bit um as well i mean obviously you get that that ezreal at the end of it all but um anything that you can get on the side of td lunar right now to get a little bit more gold is going to help you so so much to be able to get to those main power spikes and get yourself a little bit closer to where you want to be for this combo but now the rift herald started up for the team as well Alright, the Rift Herald looks like GGIS are going for it. No one is close just yet. CHJ is playing with fire. Besides that, hey, that's not actually a good idea and walks right out of there. The turrets are looking very good for the side of GGIS and it's going to get a lot worse for TD Lunar. Zircon can only stand in front of this Mordekaiser for so long. I mean, look at the discrepancy in items here mordekaiser has the rift maker already i thought it was gonna be the rylize but decides you know what i want more fighting power rift maker it is yeah i think with the way that they have been playing these games throughout this entire series really has been very team fight focused for both of these teams so getting that rift maker available early on i think makes a lot of sense for him as well as getting those uh those extra boots to kind of stop the cc the merc treads coming out um, gives it the extra tenacity to not get be able to get CC nearly as much on the side of a Boreal. So that way he's able to fight uh, very solidly against things like the Ramus and that uh, that Malphite as well. Um, just to be able to make sure that he's able to continue to run and to kind of pile drive into their enemy team. That's the, the goal of what this Mordekaiser wants to do here. Now Kilgar... Might be up a oh, little bit. Oh, he's got CHA in the corner. Oh Does land a chance of corruption. It's huge. Burst damage. Kilgar picks up another kill. 3-0 and 1. 400 gold bounty. And looks like just secured his team an easy dragon. Yeah, the AP Varus coming out in full effect there. That it was an absolutely insane ultimate. The chains of corruption corrupted that Soraka and just gave her no shot at being able to do anything there. I mean, basically half health turned with just the ultimate itself. That was, I, I mean, otherworldly to say the least. Now, Boreal might be in a little bit of trouble here. The Rift Herald is going to go down, and he's going to try to fight for it, but might be a little bit too little too late. Yeah, they just using it for pressure to get that dragon, which is A-OK -okay with me. Does give over some EXP back, but I think that that is not a big deal. Yeah, I would... Yeah, I would think that it doesn't really matter too much. Gonna pick up the dragon number two. The mountain soul is on the map, which is gonna be very Oh, this is a team. fight I'm rolling up a four-man curse, and they're just absolutely eviscerating TD Lunar. And it looks like the ghosts in space are going to the moon as they're cleaning up this team fight. Easy peasy. And man, there's not much left for them to do because it's been such a clean game so far. And they're Approaching that 10k gold lead, Krakadonius. Yeah, and they're getting to the point too where all those confident that plays that they've been making in the early game that didn't quite work out for them, it doesn't really matter at this point. They're so far ahead, they can continue to make these plays just like this. All right, uh, that's... Flash, I mean, yeah. Like... <laughs> oh, Man. there's the ultimate from Lucas coming in. That could have been used a lot earlier, if you ask me. Yeah. 
Um, Lucas here n doesn't have a lot of deaths. Was able to recover farm by taking topside instead of at that dragon. So made some sacrifices to get where he is Ooh. today. But is it going to be enough? I don't think so. This gold lead is just so massive. And they just don't have any strength to fight back at this moment. I mean, the Wombos coming out from GGIS. Absolutely deadly at this moment. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that here. And now Baron coming up here in a few moments. I think if you are the side of GGIS, you have to have your eyes on that right at 20 minutes. I don't think there's any reason why you wouldn't look to go for it here when you have such an insane, insane advantage to be able to bring them to you and look to find those engages. Looks like they're going to farm up just a little bit more, getting that red buff onto the Jinx. So that way she's able to put out the damage in this fight. 4-0-3 for both her and the Mordekaiser right now, and they're looking absolutely gigantic in terms of their items as well. Both already at two items and their own boots, and they're looking very nice here coming into this mid-game. 20 minutes on the clock, which means Baron is available, and they are pinging it already. Yeah, this Varus massive lead right now over his laning opponent, and quite definitely the richest member on <laughs> the field. So this uh, this Vars is rolling Kilgo, rolling in the dough right now. They're not doing the Baron just yet. They have set it up, but feeling like they don't need to go for it That's at this Rocka moment. Is going to be a little worried there. Can't really face check anything for her. She's in a, a really terrible spot because if she gets by, hit by basically any CC, she's just going to die um, with any sort of follow-up. Trying to get Vision out as much as possible, but it's going to be hard to be able to contest with that Amumu, with the uh, Zac being able to roam around and having such a uh, long range engage as well from them, it's going to make it really hard for the side of TD Lunar to, you know, really find their way back into this. However, I think there are win conditions, you know, obviously you can continue to scale with this Gangplank, but I think they need to turtle a little bit more than they have been so far. Worm Jones, he might actually be in a pretty bad situation but which at Black is not looking for that at the moment, but I think they know that they're there. Oh, they do now. Samus just walks <laughs> straight in with the scanner. Worm Jones, though, thinks that this is an opportunity, and we're going to have a rumble in the jungle here. Oh, Lucas pops the ultimate, but everyone disengages right oh. at that moment. I lied. No rumble in the jungle, and now it's just sad ultimates being used. <laughs> yeah, but that is a lot of stuff used for the side of them, uh, the the gangplank ultimate down no barrage for this baron they can continue to look that for that or the now uh you know dragons up in 45 seconds they could look to try to take that on spawn as well get dragon number three for their team and get one dragon away from that soul and just five minutes later a boreal having the time of his life just farming everything up now 60 farm there in that top lane matchup against the malphite he just isn't able to find quite anything on the side of uh you know this malphite matchup here and while it might be comfortable it might be a little bit easier of a champion to be able to play for him uh it's definitely not working out here so far he's not able to find the engages needed to make his pick worth it i think at this moment and so we're gonna have to see how this comes dragon now up here in five seconds and they're looking to take it right away well lucas does not have his ultimate and that is a huge power point for the side of TD Lunar. So it looks like they're just going to have to give it up. And it's a Mountain Drake, too. That is not something you want to give over. Those stats are mm -hmm. amazing. And they have two of them now. So this Mordekaiser is getting free tankiness without building too much for it. As yep. well as Amumu and Zack. They're just going to be loving these stats coming in right now oh worm jones i don't think he knows how much danger he's in now he does gonna skedaddle right out of there but that was some free poke damage from jinx there yeah a little bit of interesting build from worm jones as well i thought he would go straight into that um you know kind of anti-auto damaging uh abilities and stuff like that but right now only has the jack throw doesn't even have a second completed item and he's looking to be in a little bit of a rough position here but now they're starting up the Baron, and it's looking to be a team fight here. Oh, look at that. We have Ramish just spinning in place there, and they're <laughs> completely zoned out. It looks like they don't commit onto this Baron here. 
Uh, Kilgar did use Change of Corruption, so they have that down. And oh. now the ultimate, is it directly onto Adishon? No, it's right onto Worm Jones. And a oh. huge f in the background. The divers are on top of Adishon. He gets out of there with a flash. True Shot Barrage goes right over top. Aboreal picks up another kill, and now he's got two more. Lucas trying to get the kill onto Witch, and he does get it. CHJ, you are late. Where were you? And now is going to fall. Boosters picks up a kill on the back end, and that is a fight that they were looking to win. No shot from the side of TD Lunar. Yeah, four for, or sorry, five for one. The absolute ace coming out from them here. That's going to be the Baron, and that's probably going to be the game here. 12,000 gold lead. They aren't able to find anything in a lot of these team fights. And even when it seems like they might have a chance to be able to finish off one person, the only person that they're able to find is that tanky, tanky Zach that's just been diving on their backline constantly. CHJ not able to find any of the healing during that fight as well. You, As you were mentioning, kind of zoned off the entire fight. Wasn't really able to make much of an impact. And when you can't find that healing onto your main carries, the gangplank, the Ezreal, to be able to keep them alive long enough, they're going to get absolutely blasted in a lot of these fights. Yeah, that is um, absolute thrashing they've been receiving all game <laughs> here, okay? Kakadonius, I mean, it's just, it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. And, I mean, Adishon's doing his best to lay down damage, but he's just alone Ezreal here. Lucas is starting to get some power under his belt. It's been lifting quite a bit, but, you know, doesn't have the benchmarks to carry this game here. And now that we're getting to this timer ticking down as this soul coming up, they have the Baron so they can get the push as well. And uh, Zircon Ooh, is just blank. not going to get any tank here. Yeah, they have the surround. They don't know where it's exactly, but now they do. And they're honing in. Boostus trying to hunt for the kill. Worm Jones playing distraction. He's going to do so for now. Do they keep chasing? They kind of are surrounded here. So uh, this is a good waste of Baron. T uh, TD doing a pretty good job here. Worm Jones is clearing out a ward. Whoa, why are you doing that right now? Does spell immune the chains of corruption? Dodges the rocket and the arrow on the way out is baiting oh, oh that was a juke okay you, uh worm jones that was some pretty clever driving oh no no yeah that was so close but at the end just doesn't hit the mark yeah and now with the uh jungler being down here minute 16 on the soul they're looking to probably take that on spawn here they have the setup Look at that vision in the bot side jungle. It's all lit up like a Christmas tree and bringing all the gifts for the boys and girls of GGIS to be able to bring this one home in the form of that dragon soul in just a minute now. And uh, it's looking extremely dire. 19 kills to five for this team. of Oriole might be a little bit too far forward, but it doesn't quite matter when he has his ultimate up. He's going to be able to throw them into that nether realm and they will be able to look now to set up for this. Ramis looking to face check. Not oh, though. yeah, is able to dodge that death as Jinx closing in on three items, getting pretty close here. And once you get that Lord Dom's Worm Jones and Zircon aren't going to be as tanky as they used to be. Oh, Ooh, a boreal right on to CHJ the Soraka. There's no way she survives this 1v1. Tries to do a little bit of a ring around the rosy to her death here. Samus does gets in a pretty good ultimate in the front line. Kilgar is wow. going low, but there's just too much damage, and they completely thwart that attempt right there. Not a single member falls on GGIS. And you know what? They're playing it slow here. They don't want to throw away this victory. They pick up the soul, a triple mountain soul as well i mean the tanky stats are just gonna get insane and now i mean it's just a win game we're just here to watch the final steps play through yeah i mean you thought that uh they were hard to kill before then you add these all these extra stats the extra shielding that they get from this mountain soul and it's gonna be nearly impossible i think to kill the zach the mordekaiser and the amumu i, I think that's just too big of a front line especially with that Mountain Soul to be able to deal with. Um, as you said, you know, 15,000 gold lead now. 
absolutely unheard of at 30 minutes. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, all, all, all but said and done at this point in the game, looking to bring down those walls of the base. Um, and they're definitely looking to do it here pretty soon. I mean, obviously, I think there's almost no way that they come back into this. Um, maybe finding picks here and there, but it seems like Zircon, it seems like Worm Jones just haven't had the effect in this game that they did in the last one here, and they weren't able to find those effective engages that they were in game number two. Yeah, and it just looks like our, we're just waiting around for GGIS <laughs> to cross the T's and dot the I's here as they are taking their time, their sweet, sweet time. They're just chilling out. They're mellowing here. We're just going to wait for... I'm assuming we're just waiting for Baron to spawn. Worm Jones is going to be doing the drive-by yet again. He's been doing a lot of running away here <laughs> on the side of TDL. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, it looks like we might find something here. CHJ not in a good position. Oh, no. Oh, they don't get it, though. And now they're a bit overcommitted. That's two ultimates down already. Samus is low, surrounded by a lot of red. Worm Jones is gone in, and now he's going to be absolutely slaughtered. Zircon is on the back line, but he can't do anything. There's not enough damage, and now Lucas falls in one after another. CHJ. Running in on Soraka is never going to be a good sight for your team here. Adishan, you tried your best, but unfortunately, there is just not enough damage or tankiness on your own team here. Stretching strikes, probably not going to lead a kill. And now he's just going to limp away and heal in his base. Krakadonius, we have a winner between these two teams in the semifinals. Going Ghost in space is going to be picking up their victory here. Krakadonius, I, I need you to inform our viewers here and our potential finalists and winners of GGIS. How did they do it? Wow. They had an absolutely amazing game there. The pace was just absolutely unprecedented. Uh, able to constantly get around the map with that Zach with that Amumu and always put the pressure on the enemy team to be able to try to do something here. We can see the damage coming out from the Mordekaiser, the damage coming out from the Varus was just absolutely on another level. 20,000 plus damage for both of them here. Um, more than anyone on the enemy team and more than double for most of their the rest of their own team as well. 9-0-7, 7-0-6, 8-0-8 for their main carries here. I mean, they were just unkillable. They couldn't get touched. They had no way to get on top of these main carries, especially that Varus and the Jinx. I mean, they they were not even in a position that, where they even had a chance to go down in most of those team fights. So a huge, huge shout out to them for a great peel on the side of the Amumu. Great engages coming out from the Zac and really awesome, uh, you know, uh, uh, Death Realms as well from Mordekaiser to be able to get the right targets out at the right times, you know, most of the time on CHJ, get the, getting that Sorak out early, at least zoning her out of a lot of the fights. Um, but really great job overall by GGIS. Um, and looking to go into those finals with a very nice win under their belts against this TD Lunar squad. Um, looking at the other side of the bracket as well, um, I have that pulled up right now. Looks like they are just now getting into a game three uh, GG returns yeah. and uh, CB Phoenix, I believe it is as well. So looking really solid there too. Uh, another great series on the other side of the bracket. So looking to see who's going to end up facing GGIS uh, in that uh, final series here. Just, I mean, should be in the next half hour or so. That could be potential all GG finals. <laughs> You're going to have to tune into the other stream to find out. As we're going to wrap it up here because, I mean, we want to send you all over to that other stream for that maximum coverage here. Uh, I do want to say, Krakadonius, thank you for joining me on the desk. I am Crims, and I'm also going to be shouting out everyone here that helped make this tournament. Going to be going over production here, Ludiolo. Thank you for producing for us. And a special shout out to the tournament organizer. 
Lee, okay, thank you, homegirl. You've been tournament organizing for us this whole way through. It was going to be amazing. I know you were worried. She did a great job, and so we're going to go and give her a special applause there. And now, everyone, tune in to Lindor and Orion breaking down that other series. Hope you guys have fun here, and we are going to be catching you later. Goodbye, everybody.